flowers right next to the swan's nest. Those flowers are called purple loosestrife. It is a ridiculously invasive species. It pretty much took over a lot of Hamilton and Stony Creek at one point. They had to do some serious um, eradicating of it. They did a really good job though. There's only a couple springs here and there now. We're heading back down to Bayfront Park. We're gonna take a slightly different route going along the water this time. This area right here is one of my particular favorites. I love weeping willow trees. I just think they're so picturesque. And this is also actually a very popular spot to go fishing. So if you're into fishing, you can come down here and do that. Personally, it's not really my thing. I can't go that long without talking, but you know, to each their own. happened at Bayfront Park too. A little while ago they had the night market down here which is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. It's a market at night. They had the Dusk Dances events here in July. They held the Dragon Boat Regatta. Unfortunately if you want to find out more about these events I'm not really the best person to go to. They don't actually tell me anything. So if you want to find out more I'd say go to the City of Hamilton website and see that big beach. This beach is actually man-made, and although it looks like a lovely spot to hang out, and it is, once again, you cannot swim in this water. It is not safe for people. This area in particular is just full of bacteria from the geese. You don't want to be in it. You might get very sick if you go in. Just up here, up the hill to the right, is the Argyle Pavilion. This was donated by the Argyle Sutherland Highlanders of Canada, also known as the Princess Louises. It was designed by Canadian architect Raymond Moriyama and donated in 2003. If you take a look along the hedges, you can see some little pink flowers. Those are wild roses. They smell absolutely lovely. And one other kind of wildlife down here that I haven't mentioned just yet. Lately, we've been seeing some mink. And mink are these sort of weaselly looking creatures. They kind of look like ferrets if you've ever seen one of those. Usually we see them moving up and down the water hunting for their food. You're going to start to see some little birdhouses. These birdhouses were originally built for the swallows so that they'd have a safe place to nest. However, unfortunately, when the swallows would move out for the winter, the squirrels would move in. And then when the swallows tried to come back in the spring, the squirrels and the swallows would get into fights, and it was just not pretty. So they started putting these cones around the bases of the birdhouses, and that did effectively baffle the squirrels. So you're going to see that most of the birdhouses have these cones. They're just for the swallows. Some of them have this one up here. This one doesn't have a cone, you know, got to give the squirrels their fair share of the real estate. As I'm sure you can imagine, this housing market is incredibly competitive, but most of them are for the swallows now. It's nice for them to have a safe place to nest so that they don't get hurt by predators.
coming up here on the right, you can see this big rock with the chain attached to it. I've been told that this is multiple things. I've been told that it's meant to represent old anchors that they had before they had iron ones. I've been told that it's an art installation. Uh, personally, I just thought they were trying to keep the rock from getting away. I do have confirmation that it is legitimately an art installation. The message is something about not being chained down. I don't know the artist, unfortunately. because of the history, but it is still a really cool component of Hamilton history nonetheless. And if you've ever heard of Rocco Perry and any of his mob activity, that has to do with him. He was all up in that business. And we now arrived back at Pier 4 Park. Great place to go for a picnic. You can sit up on the grass, on the picnic tables. If you're going to do that though, please make sure you're protecting your food from the geese, because if you don't, they might decide to partake in your meal and you won't have a choice about it. established in the 1880s and obviously continues to operate to this day. Lots of stuff runs out of here. The McMaster sailing team runs out of here. They have sailing summer camps, sailing lessons, stuff like that. They've really helped to establish the love for sailing and boating in the area. They also host a lot of big events like proms and weddings. Sometimes we get to see people dressed up real fancy and that's always a treat. And they also have their own outdoor pool. If any of you are members, get me in there. It's a bit bumpier over here. Just a heads up, it's going to be about this bumpy for the rest of the ride. Take a look at the construction. 
construction site right up here. You can see some of the old trolley cars from back when we ran to it once. A little ways over, you can see this tiny little house. Now look at how small that building is. Really take it in. Would you believe it if I told you that that used to be Scoop's ice cream parlor? They used to fit the entirety of Scoop's in there. I used to work in Scoop's in the building that we have now. We could barely fit customers in that one. I don't know how they operated out of that thing. We do just need to remind everyone please remain seated all body parts inside the ride and i would like to ask that everyone please remain seated until i come around and let you off of the trolley thank you with us today. Again, my name is Ray. Your driver today is Mel. Thank you for joining us and we hope you guys had a fantastic time.